right, Fez, you got another story that just came in. That's right. This is from San Francisco, where a federal appeals court has refused to reconsider its ruling that saying the Pledge of Allegiance in public schools is unconstitutional because of the words, under God. I always even thought it was weird as a kid that you would even have to say a pledge to your country. Because you know what's weird about it? <laughs> they never make adults say that. When's the last time you said the Pledge of Allegiance? Well, it's been years. Years and, years and years and years. I mean, if there was ever a time to say it, it would maybe on your day that you voted. You know, but they never say, or before a ball game, you never have to say the pledge unless you're a child. They only make children swear their eternal allegiance to the United States of America. And we have to sit there like crazy little robots. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag. They, we want to get it in their heads quick. Well, the good part now is we'll cut out the under God and they'll really be in and out. So they say this is uh, the same court that in June said it was unconstitutional to make kids say the pledge in school. So now it's going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. That it is. will be decided in the Supreme Court. Remember the day that they, this first it passed the first court, all the senators and congressmen walked out and said it together. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they were, had, you know, they were trying to remember it. Now here's the thing: if we saw any sort of Iraqis or Taliban or anyone else. Doing a similar pledge to their own people, yeah. you would think, oh, those brainwashed fools. Especially the children. The children are so brainwashed. <laughs> you know, like they don't uh, even get a chance to choose over there when they show the crazy little uh, Cuban kids. Oh, right, yeah. And they already look like they're in the army when they're four. Yeah, because they have that thing that's the Cuban Boy Scouts, but it's something like Frontier Soldiers or right. something. Pioneer Soldiers, rebels like forever. <laughs> So, yeah, this is going to go to the Supreme Court next. So, of course, President Bush is really upset. Attorney General John Ashcroft actually condemned the decision. I condemn, I condemn them. I condemn this decision and says that the Justice Department, they will spare no effort to preserve the rights of all citizens to pledge allegiance to the American flag. Yeah, but we never do as adults. I never had a job where it came up. I never remember. Bye-bye, guys. Nice seeing you. I remember them. I never remember. Oh, yeah. They won't even hear it for another eight seconds. Oh, yeah. Now they're in the going, oh, bye. <laughs> They'll come running back. <laughs> <laughs> There's ribs if you want them. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Um, why don't they ever make adults say it? Would you say it if you had to before work? Yeah, I would say it. I would have no problem saying it. Because I do swear eternal allegiance to this country. Yeah, you've never done a damn thing. <laughs> I help. I do my share. Well, you join the military. <laughs> I write some checks. We all do what we can. <laughs> Let me ask this. Do they make the Marines or anybody say the Pledge of Allegiance? That's a good question. I don't know if soldiers, military guys, have to start their day with the pledge. I mean, I don't even think they do it when we bring in a, a new uh, president or a congressman. You think that would be an occasion to say the Pledge of Allegiance. But the only place I remember doing it was school. Yeah, yeah, we did and it. I'm wondering if I even had to do it in high school. Yeah, we did it in high school. I remember doing it in high school. You did it in Cub Scouts. Yeah, Scouts was very big, and there it was great because that was your first salute. Yeah, you got the salute, and you were in a uniform. Only if you wore your uniform. If you didn't wear your uniform, they would, they'd make you put your hand over your heart. You know, when I was in Cub Scouts, and not to get back to my childhood, but the uniform was never all together. Either the pants were dirty or the shirt was dirty. I never had the whole uniform. We're talking about our country now, not your awful... Fat a childhood. Why so, fat? I'm wondering why. I mean, are you? Uh, would you say? Do you think it's a problem for the kids to say the under God part? No, I don't. Th I don't see a problem with that whatsoever. Even though some of the kids have different gods, and there's an atheist families out there, there is no problem with saying under God. Let me check with Rory. Rory, what do you think? I don't have a problem with it, but uh, if kids don't want to say it, they have every right to do that. You, what if they don't say the pledge? The pledge they have to. They have to say the pledge. <laughs> because, you know, they're an American first, and then they can do their religion second. I, I, no. <laughs> You're a child of God second. Because the Pledge of Allegiance, it shows unity. It teaches the kids about, you know, government and liberty and freedom and everything that we stand for. All right, so you, you don't have any problem with the kids saying the pledge, but they, if they don't want, you, you don't have a problem with this dropping the under God. If they want to be silent during that part, but not... Cancel the whole thing. Uh, you don't don't cancel take it, the whole thing. Don't right. take it out. Don't take the words out. Just let some kids stop talking for two words. Exactly. For three words. And do you think that we should have to say it as adults? I think it might be a good thing. It'll 
I think it would be nice for people. I think it'll it'll teach people, you know, about what it means to be an American. Do you, know? you, you even remember it in school paying attention to that part? Don't remember? Uh, he mumbled through that thing. Roy, would you be able to say it now? I bet. I, I think I, I got to give it a run. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag <laughs> the United States of America. Wow, I just went blank on that. You don't remember it. No, you I don't. don't remember the Pledge of Allegiance. I always thought I did. Like, I just never had Because to. I guarantee you never said it. Now, I was thinking whether I said it in high school or not. I don't think I even showed up until it was even done. I never thought that whole whole room thing really meant to start a school. Yeah, I thought you did that first. You'd really have to be on time. So I did a lot of that, hey, why should I show up for a class? This isn't really even a class. <laughs> All right, what do you think here? 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. Give it another shot, Roy. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I, I just blank out after Unbelievable. that. Unbelievable. I can't believe and that. And yet, here you are. I just want you to know this. You you have this belief that we all should show our unity and how important it is, and you don't even have to know it. Well, here's the thing. You can't like, even get to the United States part. In my mind, I always thought, you know, oh, I'll never forget this. I say it every single day. I guarantee you. Here's the thing. You never even did it um, by yourself before. You're always with the other kids, and you're mumbling along. That's true. It's yeah. like when you think you know the words to a song because you sing along with it on the radio. Yeah, exactly. And then if you actually had to sing that Beatles song, yeah. you couldn't remember the words. Here is uh, Brandon. Brandon, you're on Ryan right Fez. Hey, Ryan Fez. Hey, buddy. Um, I'm an ex-Marine, and uh, I know we did not take Pledge of Allegiance, but uh, in the morning when they raised the flag, if we happened to be out around base, we'd just face the direction of where the flag was on base and have to salute. I'll say this. I always like a nice flag ceremony, like whether it's bringing it down or taking it up. I always think that's nice. Yeah, we stop. We got that in elementary school. Everyone went outside the classrooms, and we watched. You had, like, two kids that got really lucky, and they got to raise the flag with the principal there. Yeah. And then he led the entire school in the pledge. No, was it our flag? Were you still raising that Confederate flag down there? It was the United yeah. States flag. 48 stars. All right, so Marines never have to say it, huh, Brandon? No, no, there's no uh, Pledge of Allegiance, said. That's but, very uh, you know, No, you know, it's, uh, you know, we did our salute and uh, we were doing uh, other things to protect the flag anyway, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone kind of takes it for granted, but I right, thank you very much. But is that something because we learn it as kids, or do we even have to? I had no idea. I could have, I would have thought for sure the military All right, did the pledge. Roy, I don't want you looking it up in the other room. Stay in where we can see you because you have to learn it. Tim, you're on Hey, Tim. Hey, how you doing? We're good. Hey, this is ridiculous, the Pledge of Allegiance. I mean, you know, a lot of people, they uh, they don't want to uh, worship idols and stuff. They look at a piece of cloth. The thing is, it's lost all meaning. I mean, if you're looking at the ideals of America and all the good things America is supposed to stand for, great. But that's not what they're doing. They're like uh, pledging allegiance to a piece of cloth. You know what I mean? Well, you know, do you still, do you think the flag is a symbol for you, though? Uh, not for me, no. All right, so you, that's just your own personal political views. You think? Yeah, it, exactly. I mean, you, are you saying if the country was in better, you know, was more to your way of thinking, you'd you'd be glad to salute no, a flag? No, I think America's great and all that, but I don't think that uh, I should force my ideas on anybody else. Well, ideas. You, this wasn't even put in at the beginning of, uh, you know, this the Pledge of Allegiance started in the 1890s. Right. And then the Thunder God came in uh, 55, you know. All this came on later. All right, so the original Pledge of Allegiance did not have Under God in it. No. Okay. They added that when, when we're fighting communism and all this nonsense. All right, thank you very much, Tim. All right. All right, see you later. So he's saying... What's the big deal about saying a pledge? And the reality is, as as adults, we don't think it's a big deal. Here's Rory, 26 years old, and can't say it. And yet he, of course, was ready to spout off his opinions about it. So you wanted to leave, you didn't have a problem if the kids didn't say the under God part, Rory. Right. You're leaving out a lot more words. Yeah. You I, just he get, never even got the under God. You no. just get to, I pledge allegiance. Here's, uh... Here's Mary, you're on Rana Fez. Mary, go ahead. How can, I mean, why, why do these people not want to say the pledge? I mean, it's like saying that you go to, the, to a, fo a basketball game, football game, and you don't want to sing a Star Spangled Banner. Well, what we're saying is that you never have to say the pledge as an adult. It never comes up. 
I'm no. 30, 42 years old, and I know. I'm not saying that you don't know it. I, I, I know it. I'm sure Fez knows it. I know Maybe it. Is, you know, trying to get online to find it. But we're not, that's not the point. The point is, is, I wonder how come you never saw, I mean, it would, be, it would mean more for an adult who is really in charge of defending the United States more than it is a first grader or a kindergarten kid. Yeah, but that's where we learn to pledge allegiance. That's Some of us did. The Star, the Star Spangled Banner and all the all those poems. What about the under uh, all those poems? What about the <laughs> under God part, Mary? Should uh, the kids have to say that though? Hey, on my dollar bill it says, "In God we trust." Why not? Well, they'll go after that next. Don't uh, kid yourself. Yeah, that is just the tip of the iceberg. The under God and the pledge. Then it's going to be in God we trust. It's going to be uh, so help me God in yeah. the courtroom. God is going. God's going quick. <laughs> In this country. Here's uh, Sue, you're on Run of Fez. How are you, Sue? Hey, Sue. Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. I actually had to say the pledge as an adult because um, I became a U.S. citizen. That's right. They yeah. always do that at that ceremony. That's yeah, right, when you get sworn in as a citizen. Where are you, yeah. where are you from, Sue? Korea. Right, she's from Korea, Korea and she yeah. she was born in Korea, and yeah. she knows the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, I definitely know the whole entire Pledge of Allegiance. Rory's from the ha- right no, now. I don't want I don't want to give Rory a break. Rory's from the Hamptons <laughs> and doesn't know it. Give it another shot, Rory. Back there at his prep school at his solid gold desk, and put your hand over your heart. I know she hasn't done that yet. I pledge allegiance. <laughs> right hand. I... <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. With uh, liberty and oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, all right. A Korean woman is slapping at you because you don't know the pledge of your own country. <laughs> I just, I just went blank. I can't. I, I, you didn't so, go blank. Go blank is when you forget something for a second. This has been going on for ten minutes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, honey. Okay. Bye, right, bye. Bye. What is cuter than a little Korean girl? Two little Korean girls? No. No, you're talking, brother. No, you're talking. But you're right. I do love that swearing-in ceremony because it looks like a little scene from Revenge of the Nerds. You'll have a l- little Asian women, maybe some old Asian guys, some guys from Cameroon. You'll get a whole mix of ethnic backgrounds all saying the pledge together. It's so cute. Why does that make them nerds? I don't understand what you're saying. If you're not white, you're not a nerd? <laughs> I'm saying it's cute. Here's Curtis. You're on a fez. It's a cross section. God, you're just. I want to echo what Tim said earlier. Oh, well, let me just stop this for fez. White people are so scared of black people. Hi, what has that got to do with it? You know, Ani's coming to Baltimore then. Yeah. We are the only country in the world that pledges allegiance to a flag. And Is that right? Nobody else has one. No one else has a pledge to the flag. Canada doesn't have one. No one else. We are the only one. I wonder why we have it. It's a very odd thing. I mean, obviously, it's not a big de- deal for adults. They don't even say it before the president speaks. Yeah, once you really get your driver's license, you really don't have to say it anymore. You don't have to say it in college. No. And uh, high school, believe me, they go through the motions. All right, so, Curtis, you have a problem with the under God part or just the whole pledge? Just the whole pledging allegiance to an inanimate, inanimate object. All right, but and we all understand symbolisms, right? We understand so. if you're a Christian, that's not really Jesus hanging up there on a cross, even though a lot of these other religions even hate that. <laughs> right. They don't even want to see anything up on their walls. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I, the empty cross. And I uh, don't want to say anything about any other religions, but your churches look like crap. You want to come way on a deal and roll into a Catholic church, that thing is macked out. <laughs> That thing, when you're a kid, you can just sit there if you're bored and read this, the windows. There's so much to look at. You can go into a Catholic church every Sunday for your entire life and still see something new. I was, that you hadn't noticed before. I was so proud of the Catholics until the first time I went into a Greek Orthodox church. Man, you might as well be walking into a Bennigan's. They got so much stuff hanging up. All right, so Curtis says uh, not only uh, do, you, you, do you drop the under God, drop the whole damn thing, he says. Fez. Get rid of it. That it's just an inanimate object. Get rid of the flag. Let's oh, just yeah, have just pole. lose the flag. Let's just have a pole up there. Now, personally, I don't understand who's people who just see this cloth. When I see the American flag, it brings back everything for me. And I'm one of those people at the ball game. I really enjoy uh, the kind of pomp and circumstance of the national anthem and the flag and everybody looking at it. Or when we roll out the gigantic flag, I always get a big kick out of that. I love a big flag when they do that, when they roll it out on the football field. But here's what I don't like. When they roll out that flag that's in the shape of the United States of America. Yeah. 
That thing looks like you've yeah, just torn up a flag. Well, it was actually made that way. They didn't have a giant flag and they cut it. I know, but that's what it looks like. It looks like they burned the edges of it. Well, just, um, I don't like that one. Why don't you just say to yourself over and over, it was manufactured this way. <laughs> it's that way, good. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you're on Ron Fez. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. My freshman year in high school, I had this uh, gothy kid in my English class who, uh, he never stood up for the Pledge of Allegiance, and they came to him and talked to him about it, and they said, you have to say it, until eventually he petitioned the school, and then I went to the school board to where he didn't have to stand up and say it at all. He could just sit there and go to sleep. Yeah, I, uh, basically, those people, it always makes everybody mad, but they pretty normally get away with it as long as the kid's not... You know, goose step, and if he just sits there quietly or yeah, whatever. Yeah, this whole thing happened around that Columbine time, and he was one of those freaky people, so it was just like, okay, do whatever you want, don't kill him. Just, yeah, right, thank you very much. <laughs> At Columbine, helped weird kids all over the country, whether you want to believe it did or not. This goes back to the deal of kids really getting to feel singled out when their parents say, I don't want you standing up for the pledge. The news story today, Fezzy. That's right, it was the Federal Appeals Court that in June said... They will not. They will not allow the Pledge of Allegiance in school because, with the under God, it makes it unconstitutional. They are upholding that decision today. Next stop, the Supreme Court of the United States of America. All right, that's the second court in a row that said, "Yeah, you don't. We got to drop the under God." Right. They and, won't reconsider their decision. It all came from just you know San Francisco, of course, some wacky family there, and it's going to go to the Supreme Court. Now, the weird thing is. And everybody's going, okay, this is a slam dunk. What's the big deal about under God? They have to prove it legally. That's the problem once it gets in the court. It's not just what you like or it's tradition. You have to legally say, hey, is this forcing people? And since the only people that have to say it are children, because obviously none of the adults say it. Look at Rory. He doesn't even remember it. He can't remember half of it. Now, what they're saying is in their decision, and it was uh, two to one, not to reconsider this, they're saying that it amounts to the government endorsing religion in schools, in public schools. Here is John, you're on Fez. Hey, John. Just lost you, buddy. Here's another John, you're on Fez. John? Oh. There you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I agree with you, Ron. Uh, the, the flag does mean something to me. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, I feel uncomfortable about the fact that I have to get up and pledge to to a co a country and um you know that that just makes me uncomfortable all right so it's to force me to do that all right yeah all right so you're still in school now yeah what grade uh 10 all right so you when you have to stand up and you're saying i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic and as you get oh i don't want to give it away yeah. to Roy. <laughs> but um as you're getting into that you're thinking to yourself what am i doing well, no, it becomes monotonous. We just sort of get up. You kind of ramble it off. I remember I that, even, though. Yeah, it's early in the morning. So. I don't even know it. Yeah. I just sort of mime everyone around me. Yeah. All right, well, you know better than Rory. Okay, so you're not so much uncomfortable at the fact that you're saying it's just a monotonous thing in the school day. Yeah, it's, it's useless, really. Yeah, well, I, I think it's kind of, you know, the world has changed a lot since the time, like in the 50s, citizenship and all that was part of a school curriculum. You know what I mean? You would actually... Right, yeah, you have citizenship classes. Yeah, and you would be judged on it. And not only that, but you like yourself as a citizen in the school. And then by the time the 60s and, of course, the 70s rolled around, the teachers were just like, hey, you know, basically, as long as you don't stab anybody, we're going to get you through this thing. You know, just chill. And now, um, you know, it's just way off base. 866-277-4969, that's the toll-free phone number, D.C. Local 202-432-1067. Here's uh, Perry, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Perry. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. Uh, hey. Ron, I really agree with you um, about the symbolism of the flag and other American icons like the American Eagle. Um, every time I see something like that, I do feel proud, and I think about our country, and I think about, I mean, I just feel patriotic about it. What kills me, though, about this and the pledge. All these people after September 11th got flags and put them on their cars and stickers and let them all fall to the ground. And uh, it's 
as if it's all over with, we're all back to our same old lives, except when they're telling us to do duct tape and plastic. I think we should think about this country. And if it's saying the pledge at specific prescribed times throughout the year, like maybe 4th of July, that would be a perfect time. Um, I think we should try to find some way to do it, yeah. you know, as, as a group, uh, as Americans. And also, too, um, I think it's a good thing to, to show immigrants Hey, you're in this country. There are certain, you know, uh, advantages and benefits to living here. You pledge to us, not to that country you came from, but, because they but, weren't doing anything for you. All right, but you know something else, Perry? And I'm going to tell you the truth. I honestly believe that the immigrants that have come into this country now, the recent immigrants, are probably have more uh, faith in that American si uh, system. And the history of America, they study it, like you said, they're, you know, uh, doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Where it's, I mean, it's a real pledge. It's not like the one we went through in school, where they're oh, literally sure. oh, giving up yeah. their home and taking on a new allegiance. And there oh, is something in this country with us that have been born here, especially the people many, many generations who don't even hear stories of the old country. We take it all for granted and are completely confused about what it takes to be an American. A lot of oh, times, no, I agree. The, the people who are born here, yeah, we do take it for granted. I mean, it's you know, every day you get up, you go to work, you schlep home, and and you don't think about what it was to be an American and how you were able to earn the dollars and how you're able to go home and feed your family. And those poor folks who came from someplace else usually don't have any of those things. Right. And you know what? I mean, a lot of these people go, "Hey, I want the under God to stay in there, and I want this and this." They might not even be voting. I mean, if you're looking at the return polls, it's only, it's less than 50% voting now. And a lot of times in this country, we only get really patriotic when we get really pissed. It's yeah. not a day-to-day -day thing. It takes an attack. It takes, you know, hostages in Iran for all of a sudden everyone to start chanting USA, USA. You know, but, you know, uh, thank you very much for calling, Perry. And you know what? I do not, I honestly do not confuse those two things with real patriotism. The fact that everybody shows up or, or puts a, a flag on their car or out front, I do not see as the same thing of people that actually care about the system of government that we live in. And what always surprises me about uh, Rory is, and they brought it up again today, he's always bringing up unity. It's got to be a unity. When the real thing about being in this country is about not always being unified and people arguing out, different things other than the straight party line. And I wonder how how long this whole right and left thing has been going. Where if you bring up anything that is not exactly following what the president said, oh, that's the left for you. Oh, you probably read the New York Times. What the hell are you? You're spouting off somebody else's BS. You should be able to look into all these things. And I don't see, there's never been a man that I would agree with 100% of the time. How does that make you a good citizen if you only agree 100% of the time? Then you're a robot. You're an idiot. Robot idiot, do you want to try and say the pledge one more time before we break? I'll give it a shot. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, through which, and, it, through which it stands. And, which it stands. <laughs> and to? And, and, and to the? And to the republic? Uh, or... Or, or so help me die. <laughs> or so help me die. <laughs> you moron. Or so help me die. It's Friday night. We're hanging out. We're Ron and Fez. I'm 106.7 WJFK. Talking about the federal appeals court decision today where they said they're not going to reconsider their June ruling where they said that making kids do the Pledge of Allegiance in school is unconstitutional because of the words under God. Maybe if we could just come up with under higher power. Under a higher power. That's Billy's pledge. <laughs> he takes that every day and then still fails. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on the Run of Fest show. Hey, Chris, go ahead. Fest. How are you all? We're calling the gang. Uh, not much. Not, I'm a teacher in Maryland. Yeah. And I've seen a number of students that don't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't think teachers are, are forcing the students to stand up and do it. Do you think they should be forced? I think they should be forced. No. I think they have that right not to stand up or not to say under God. Your God may not be the same as mine. And I think people are taking it to the extreme of saying that, yes, we are 
we are worshiping a flag, a materialistic thing, versus actually a belief. All right, so that's, that's where the problems are coming in. All right, Chris, you uh, are a school teacher. What grade? I teach elementary. All right, why don't you, uh, you know, teach the kids what the flag means? That it's not a piece of cloth, but it's a symbol of the history of this country. Is that too difficult? That's what we should be doing. Well, why aren't you? Um, you know, I'm I not, I'm not you allowed. Uh, were you saying the other teachers aren't? You're the only one. I'm not understanding your point. No, teachers are not forcing the students to have to get up and force them to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Right, but you're also saying they're not teaching much about the history of the, of the country, right? No, no, I'm not saying that part. No. All right, all right. I, I don't know. I don't know where we're at here. First of all, you said it was just a, just a, a piece of cloth, and then you also said my God might not be your God. Well, we're not mentioning a specific God. I mean, you know, you can say right. God and you can believe Zeus or whatever you really want to believe. That's right. what I choose. But, but I think I think the problem is is that everyone's opinions have been different. I mean, that's, that's obvious. And I think what's happening is we've gotten out of the sense that it's a nation that we're trying to support. It's an idea that we're trying to support. Now, maybe I'm, I'm off base here, but with you as a teacher, that would be your job to get that across. Correct. I agree. But it's also parents' job to support those things also. What, what, what aren't we doing? How aren't we supporting you? Where, where have we dropped the ball here, big man? Uh, as parents? Yeah, what are you saying? What do you want the uh, parents to do? Parents need to start taking a little bit more responsibility for what's going on in their children's life. I mean, I mean, kids are getting away with murder now. Should we go into school with them? Huh? Should we go into school with them every day? What do we? I don't understand your point. My, my point, my, my first point was, maybe I'm going off, off tangent to, my point was that teachers aren't forcing students to get up and say it. Right. And, and, I, and we said to you, why not? You're a teacher. You would be able to answer that but, for us. But because each person has, you know, because this is America, we have that right to choose. Are you allowed to make them stand up? Do we make them stand up? We don't make them or force them to stand up. What percentage of the kids sit down during the Pledge of Allegiance? I'd say at, at, at my school, it's a minuscule. All right, it's, so it doesn't it seem to be a big problem, Chris. It might be 5%. All right, 5%. Out of, out of a school. Yeah. And there wasn't one kid who didn't stand up when I was in school. That was... Yeah, me neither. I think maybe we went through some kind of, uh, you know, little protest for the national anthem. It was like a black power thing. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow, which was kind of fun. All right, Chris, uh, thank you very much. I don't understand what his point was. Did you get him, Fez? I didn't understand it because he was arguing about teachers should do something to make these kids get off their asses. Right. He's a teacher. And then he goes, your parents should do something. I'm like, they're in school. <laughs> I can't come in there and make them stand up. <laughs> See, I don't understand all the rules with the pledge now in schools. I mean, with the little kids. Yeah. Do you make them all stand up? Let's say a little kid didn't want to do it. Or he got a note from a parent. First of all, what little kid wouldn't? <laughs> When did they ever get that idea? First, what little kid would, but then you tell them to stand up and do it. All right, when I went to school, it was the silent prayer was the big deal. Right, silent meditation, yeah. called it. And uh, believe me when I tell you, I don't think anyone prayed. You just sat there quietly. Right. That was when someone went, <clears throat> yeah, right, which was hysterical. <laughs> it was just a riot. Yeah. So, you know, but that was a big thing. Should they be forced into this prayer time? And, you know, the big, you know, the angle was, hey, you don't have to pray. You're not praying out loud. And then, then you had to sing the national anthem. Right. And that was the whole gimmick all the way through. That was three things in a row. When I was in elementary school, we would have the big flag-raising ceremony. We'd say the pledge, and then we'd do a couple of numbers. we do My Country Tis of Thee. Yeah. Oh, or, really? Yeah. We'd sing a couple numbers out there. We'd always do two songs. We, uh, you know, being, USO tour. being from uh, Philadelphia, we dropped that God Bless American down constantly. <laughs> we'd always throw that out before a Flyers game. Kate Smith. Here's uh, Joe, you're on Run Fest. Did she write it? I mean, she's credited so much with it. <laughs> it's like she's the only one who ever did it. I know. Joe, you're on Run Fest. Hey, Joe. Hi, how you doing? We're cool in the gang, my friend. Not that. Yeah. Hey, I'm in the Navy. Yeah. And, and in my shop, uh, we say the pledge every morning and every afternoon that ship change. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now, is that the whole Navy or just your shop? It's just my shop. I okay. mean, we're gung, we're gung ho like that. You know, we do it to to stick together, you right? Because we work as a team. All right. Well, very interesting. Thank you, Joe. 
All right, so here's some guys who take it upon themselves as to say the Pledge of Allegiance. That's one thing we were wondering about, if there are adults out there yeah. that say it in their jobs. Uh, I, never, live. I mean, I never said it. I don't think it's an adult. I, you don't have to say it in elections. You don't have to ever say it. Uh, hi, you're on Ron Fez, Eric. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Um, not to contradict my uh, my brother and sailor right there, but uh, I'm an Army officer. Uh -huh. And according to military protocol, uh, if in uniform, you're not supposed to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Is that right? So these yeah, guys, well, are, they're renegades. They go off on their own. Well, <laughs> well you're not going to get thrown in the brig or anything, but it, it contradicts. <laughs> say the Pledge. Yeah, well, it, kind of, it contradicts uh, your oath of enlistment or your oath of commissioning. Like, uh, as an officer, I, uh, I swear to support and defend the Constitution. Right. And by then in uniform saying a pledge to the flag, uh, it, it contradicts that primary. But it, it's oh, not because you, uh, you have a higher calling there. Yeah, 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 a yeah, different pledge. And, and here's the other thing, Eric, and a lot of people get into this with the whole unity thing. You were kind of, you would, the, the military would actually say, if we have a president who's abusing the Constitution, we would turn on him, right? The well, it's kind of interesting. The in, as an enlisted soldier, yeah. they have they swear to support and defend the Constitution and to obey the orders of uh, the president and the officers appointed over them. Right. Officer, but officers don't do that. Officers are commissioned by Congress mm -hmm. to support and defend the Constitution. We don't we don't swear an oath to the president uh, or the Congress or to the United States. You don't swear to a man. Correct to the Constitution. So which, uh, which uh, makes us unique. Yeah. So if you have some kind of renegade president that the military could actually come together and say, this guy is, you know, taking us down the wrong path away from the Constitution, it would be up for you guys to defend that. Yeah. I, wow, who would make that call? Yeah, you're going to do, do a little caller ID on him. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, bro. Believe me. Yeah, this is the Defense Department. Well, you know, I never did it. I have my own yeah. thing I swear to. I say nothing to nobody but nothing. Ping, yeah. pow, pow. You saw my eye, Fez. He was out like this. Yeah, I nobody's going to get in trouble for nobody's going to get in trouble for doing that. Probably, he'd probably be applauded. And by and large, when you go to um, the Rotary Club or you're invited to speak and stuff, they'll say the pledge. It looks real awkward when you stand mm. at attention and right. don't say anything. Everybody else is so. By and large, we we will say it if in public, but according to protocol, you're not supposed to. All right, thank you very much. All right, guys. All right, that's There's some information. It's interesting to know that the that they don't really want them in the military. To say the pledge. Because it override, it would override their other pledge. They've already taken one. One oath. 866-277-4969. DC local 202-432-1067. Sabrina, you're on Ronda Fence. Hi, it's actually Sabria. How are you guys? I'm doing? sorry. I, I just read it the way it was up here on the board. Sabria? Yes. Nice to talk to you. You too. Um, I was calling. I wanted to say something about what the teacher who had called um, a few minutes ago said. You all said, you know, about children who don't want to stand up, we should maybe start explaining to them about the history of the flag. Yeah. What about the, you know, the, the children you explained to them? There are children whose um, ancestors were brought over here who were forced to come over here and who actually built this country and weren't given any recognition for that. So when you explain that to them and then they still say they don't want to stand up, you know, what do you say to that? So be, uh, you're talking about the slavery issue. Correct. And you're saying because there was slavery in the past, right? you don't feel a connection to this country now. Not saying that, but you know when you, you are explaining to the children the history of the flag. Well, we should you also know, teach I'm, them about slavery and the Civil War and all the you know, horrible things that happened. And the fact happened. that this country was built and the blood of their ancestors yes. was stripped. And, in, and you know, still in present day. There are things that aren't being given to them as, you know, African-American children. So when it comes to the issue of that and the flag, there's, you know, a lot of issues that African-Americans are going to have with the flag and standing up and pledging allegiance and Independence Day when we were still slaves. We weren't independent and we weren't free. But, you know, but all this stuff is taught in school. It's not something that's uh, kept away from children. Is it taught in school? I believe I learned about the slavery and civil war in school. And the Emancipation Proclamation and all the you, good stuff. You learn about those things, but they only teach you what they want you to know. They don't. I learned those things from my mom. They teach you what they want you to know. They don't teach you about the real issues. What was the real story of slavery? You know the real story of slavery. No, I, I, I wasn't there we, with your mom. We were forced here. We, right. We, we didn't come all right. here. We, we didn't come here as, you know, we didn't want to come here like most immigrants. We were forced here. We didn't want to be here. All right, here. we learned that part. We knew that. And we, and we built this country. African Americans built, I mean, Africans 
slaves built this country. They don't teach us that in school. Other than the railroad, okay. Other than the railroad, what about Washington, D.C.? We built this country. The Chinese built the railroad. <laughs> well, that's all I wanted to And I would say the Italians did most of the uh, masonry work. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you that's... probably would say that. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right. It's <laughs> always nice to get some information, some things we didn't know. I wish I, I, wish I could learn from her mom. I had no idea the slaves didn't want to be here in slavery. No. I had no idea they didn't want to come here. I thought they had it good. That's why they were so happy and singing in the fields. <laughs> Boy, to get set straight, finally. It feels good. Liberating. Yeah, it's nice. It is good to hear. And that's a true story, Fez. Here's uh, Will, you're around, Fez. He's a young man still in school. Hey, Will. Hey, uh, Ron and Fez. Hey, buddy. Uh, I go to uh, Fairfax County Public School, which is uh, where you guys broadcast from. Yeah, we're here in the public school. We're in the uh, auditorium tonight. Well, tomorrow, uh, come see us. We're at Woodshop from 3 to 7. Okay, uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever. I, uh, I was in the 8th grade when the Virginia uh, State Government instituted the uh, moment of silence, which is kind of a politically correct version of a, a prayer, public pr prayer in a school. Right, yeah. And uh, I stood up in my class, and I had a religious right teacher, and I had full right to stand up. It was in our little students' rights and responsibilities packet thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she yelled at me and told me to sit down, even though I had full right to. And I was sent to the vice principal's office, and they explained to me, basically, you shouldn't do this. We don't want other kids to get the idea to stand up and act independent. Just, just sit down, be quiet, and... Uh, don't pull anything. You rabble rouser. There you go. Now, is Beavis there with you, or are you on your own tonight? Let me have this. Yeah. They said we wanted to do the pledge. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. He said country. <laughs> what kind of tree is that? <laughs> Shut up, Beavis. Liz, you're on Hi, Liz. Hey, how are you, boys? I'm just answering the wacky phones tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm a teacher in Maryland. Nice. And uh, I I think the main problem is, is that it says in God, you know, it's under God. Right. And I have my kids stand up. I mean, some of them won't. If they say they have a political problem with it, you know, I respect that. But I think that the biggest misconception, though, is that it's always been there because it wasn't even in the Pledge of Allegiance until 1954. And that's only because Dwight Eisenhower is a uh, reverend. Yeah, the Red Scare. Well, yeah, exactly. And I'm not, I just don't know why everyone is so freaked out about it. They act as though the founding fathers put it in there and it's got to stay there. Well, they like their gods where they can get it, that's for sure. <laughs> um, it's really nice to them, and, you know, as soon as they bring up the money, and I think that's the next to go to, Fez. I don't think it'll last. There's there's always that, and there's always, you see this across the country, some judge who wants to post the Ten Commandments in his courtroom. Right. Those always well, end up getting yanked down. They in Virginia. Yeah. yeah. I believe yep. they have some kind of poster there. But, I mean, in God We Trust was put in a year later, in 1955. So, so that was made our national motto as opposed that to... That was the decade where we family. found religion. I'd just like to get the pyramid off the back... <laughs> That's the part that weirds me out. I know, it guy. feels like yeah, it feels like we're saluting Ra, the sun god of Egypt. <laughs> it's just so wacky. No one ever Indeed. and you know, you bring up going, what the hell is this about? And everyone goes, um, er, ah, uh, er. Why the I? Mm. <laughs> Liz, how old are the kids that uh that you're teaching? Uh seventh grade. Seventh grade. And do oh, they yeah. uh do you think it's important they even say the pledge or does it matter to you? I, well, you know, I do. I mean, I'm really patriotic, um, even though I don't think under God should necessarily be in there. But, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm not going to make a, a huge issue of it. I mean, just as a teacher, when you make a huge issue of anything, it's a nightmare. But um, I do, and I get upset when the kids take it for granted. You know, some of them stand up and they... They put their fist on their heart or they salute or whatever, and I, I try and take care of that. Right. Yeah, there's always some kid that'll do a C. Kyle thinking it's funny. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, of Rory. course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right, thanks so much, Liz. All right, thank you. Liz, I would just start taking a flask into the classroom with me, please. <laughs> we do it here. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of stress you're under, Fez. You That's any... my medicine, and I need it. Hi, you're on the Run of Fez show. Bonnie. Hey, buddy. Yes. Hey, I, I got I to gotta, the thing here. It, it's a conformity issue here. 
Um, look at where the uh, the problem originates from, from California, where you have a lot of foreigners coming in and don't even really have a respect for our country, not even not even a respect for the country, but a respect for doing what the teacher tells them to do, stand up, salute the flag, say the well, flag. I, uh, from where this came from, I'm willing to bet it was a fairly wealthy neighborhood, not foreign uh, people coming in. I don't believe this was well, brought up again, by a foreigner. This was by American citizens. Uh, and in the neighborhood it comes out of, and I'm just guessing, it's my own prejudice, I'm going to guess pretty wealthy. Well, again, it just boils down to the lack of conformity. When uh, my ancestors came in here, they did it made every effort to conform to the ways of the United States. But like who? To the language. What, what, what are your ancestors? What country Italian did they come American. from? Again, out of here, they tried to conform. There's little <laughs> Italy's all yeah, over. Now, every no city a, has a little a, Italy. <laughs> There's always a part of If anything, the rest of us had to conform to them. <laughs> you guys had the mafia. <laughs> and you'd still have it today if we didn't knock it down. Every 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 group, cultural group has their own mafia. I mean, the Yakuza. Yeah, well, then no one did it as good as you guys. That's yeah, the no, truth. No, no, I'll no. have to ask my family about yeah, the Newfoundland mafia. The sauce is good either, but anyways. But don't act, yeah. like, don't act like Italians came to this country and did not keep... Uh, they're old traditions. They absolutely I'm did. I'm not talking about tradition. I'm talking about conformity and respect for the teacher in the classroom. That's all I'm, my point is. What, what so. town are you from? Where? Uh, what town are you from? I'm from Fairfax. All right. You, you see, if I said the Pledge of Allegiance every day in school. But, but let me Maybe tell you, I, I'm going to guess this. By the time the Italians got all to right, Fairfax... I'm at work. i got to go. All right. By the all time right. the Italians got to Fairfax, they were pretty watered down. Yeah. <laughs> because in South Philly, they knocked your ass on the ground <laughs> for being from the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> or Italian-Americans. Nobody can form the Irish game here like maniacs. <laughs> Everybody did. 866-277-4969. DC local lines 202-432-1067.